Hello, RE out there. It's Mark with Redo Over, and we are back to more Mu2. We're kind of running away with this one at this point. So I don't know if I want to go for. Well, let's think about this. If we RP it, we're the Deep Mind LLC. We want to mind control all the other aliens in the galaxy, all the clients in the galaxy, or exterminate them. So we're not even really trying to defeat the Antarans. We're not going for that kind of win. We're going for a complete takeover of all the other species in the galaxy yes that's our goal so now that we have that in mind what we want to do we're well on our way we need to start locking stuff down for instance the Cylon and the human I believe are cohabitating the single single star system you can see those are two colors there it might be a little hard for you guys to see but that's both of them they each have at least one system in there and over in our colonies you can see we've in fact incorporated the first Mechlon colony at Bulan in the first human colony at Netch 2. So I think we are sending a Trilarian, or sorry, a Deep Mind, <laughs> to Netch maybe to help this human build this up. Um, could be wrong. I only say that because I see a branch 2 is down a person. Uh, we'll, we'll send someone if no one shows up there in a couple of turns. But I always like to give my little colonies with one person a jump start to two or three people. It really helps speed production along. So. Let's just hit turn, see what happens here. I have a minus one to food. Don't exactly know why that is. I believe all of our colonies have at least one farmer now. They do. Everyone that can farm has at least one farmer. That's important because it helps relieve a lot of the pressure on your freighter fleets. Freighter fleets, of course, cost you BC. It's kind of like a, a tax to run all your freighters, ultimately. Or it's not a tax, it's a cost on your empire. So farming where you can, even if it's not the best planet for farming, pulls a little bit of that food transport off your freighter fleet, leaving more room for you to jostle people around. But yeah, let's just grab a, a Mechlon here. We'll drop them in. Boom. There you go. Plenty of food. And we'll hit uh, return. Turn. We got the weather control system. That is such a cool building, by the way. That little triple curve. I love it. Modifies a planet's weather patterns to create more stable farming environment. Food production is increased by plus two per farmer. So if we put that on our uh, worlds with the natives, <laughs> they're going to be making a lot of food. And if we have surplus, obviously we convert that to BC at half a BC per surplus food. Eh, we like that. We like extra BC in the game. And we're at the 2000 RP tier. So... To play towards our build, we obviously go for spy stuff, we go for social stuff, we go for BC production. I think Robot Factory is good. I think at Astro University, though, honestly, is probably going to be the best thing that ties in with what we're doing at this point. So, yeah. And our spy technology stolen from the Cylon. So, this may be a good reason not to just completely consume the Cylon and the humans right now, even though we probably could rush in there very soon, is that we're still bleeding tech off of both of those species. Let's keep, let's keep that going for a little bit longer. Here's the armor barracks. So create tank battalions. It has two units when built and adds one unit every 10 turns up to half the planet's population in tanks. Eliminates the morale penalty of dictatorships and feudal governments. Yeah, I guess similar to how a marine barracks eliminates that, that minus 20 penalty, so... Um, but I think armor barracks doesn't replace marine barracks. I think you have a marine barracks. You have an armored barracks question, I think. Okay. Finished quite a few things here. Uh, a branch two, Chris and new ship, the salesman 1.5. We got an auto lab done, a gravity generator done. That's right. We, we want to get gravity generators done everywhere we need them because we are a low grav deep mind is low grav species because it's a nice way to get some negative uh trait points research lab and another gravity generator that's very cool one thing to bear in mind is that gravity generators get, let's see can i i see no i don't want to no no don't destroy it here we go i i guess i'm not exactly clear on how much um, maintenance the gravity generator takes. I'm sure it's a good amount here. Can we click up here? 
So I'm clicking on the BC summary at the top here, and it's giving me a breakdown of taxes collected, leader bonuses, government bonus, trade goods. So that's our money coming in. How do you see, I, I, I'm actually a little bit shocked that I'm having trouble realizing how you see your outgoing, your expenses. Interesting. There's got to be some way to see that. All right, not the biggest thing in the world. We'll, we'll continue. I'm sorry. Um, I I do. I am curious. So it's like after the fact. So like, look look here. If I if I have research lab up at the top, it says the cost here to build is sixty. Maintenance cost is one. So that's the the that is the cost every single turn to have this building in our empire per one of them. So I want to know what the gravity generator is. I can go to another colony that hasn't built one. Could I go to the technology information possibly and see that? We'll check, but let's select our items here real quickly. Where are we at? Uh, let's get a spaceport because we want the coin. Let's get the research lab. Maybe that auto lab, biosphere. I'm just kind of loading stuff up right now. A little willy nilly. Uh, let's get that Starbase stock exchange and radiation shield. Radiation shield actually is a maintenance cost one. Let's look over this real quick. Stock exchange is a maintenance cost two. So as you go up by tier, so Spaceport's the first BC production build that you can get. Maintenance cost on that is one. Stock exchange is the next tier. It's a two. I wonder if that's true for most structures. So like a research lab has a maintenance cost one. Auto Lab as a maintenance cost three, but I think Auto Lab's the third tier of research producing buildings, I think. Okay, good enough. Let's continue. Uh, gravity generators completed here. Let's change that over. Kind of the same situation here. Let's get the spaceport, research lab, uh, marine barracks. Do we need marine barracks? Auto Lab, Biosphere, Starbase, Stock Exchange. Boom. Boom. And we completed an auto lab here. These guys are getting pretty good. At some point with artificial gravity or artificial planets, we could generate, uh, compress that gas giant down into a, I think a large uh, barren world. But I'm not so focused in on doing making our own colonies i want to essentially mind control take over alien species and, and grow our empire that way that's sort of what we're keen in on i'd say these guys are built out as well as they need to be right now i don't think there's anything else on there we need we need more salesmen we need more ships so let's do it there's another salesman in the queue it'll finish that in 16 turns that's a pretty good production rate and i want to jump into the info tab we were talking about tech review Okay, here we are in the tech review. Let's, it doesn't say, let's go to colony. So page down, gravity generator, where's it right here? Planetary gravity generator. You cannot see what the BC is now. And if I click on buildings over here, no. I'm truly surprised. I, I I thought when you moused over your colony on a building, it would give you that information. It doesn't go. Live and learn. I don't think gravity generators are cheap. I, that's part of my point. <laughs> Let's continue. <clears throat> Soul Prime finished the automated factory. Another gravity generator's down with the salesman in there. That's awesome. Those having the inappropriate gravity for your species is a massive drain on your colony. It's either a uh, 25% if you are on a low grav or you're a low grav species on a medium grav world. If it's high gravity and you're a low or normal gravity species, the high gravity world is a minus 50%, I believe. So it's half reduction to everything. It's a massive detriment. So you've got to mitigate that as soon as is reasonable. In here, Netch has not got an extra person. Let's just pluck, let's pluck one of our deep mines and we're going to send them to Netch be there in two turns and that should help the, those little folks out yeah let's sort by producing there we go so 
I've had it explained to me that these are the most expensive things in our queue. And, and actually, I've had one other thing explained to me, which we're going to try and start doing. It's a little meta, but I understand it. Let's, let's try this out. Let's jump into what, what's our biggest production. Let's go to our highest industry planet, Raw One. They're working on a salesman. We're going to click on this. We're going to design the largest, most expensive thing we can. In this case, a Titan. Can I make a Titan? Can I make a Doomstar? I can't make a Doomstar yet. You will not let me make a Doomstar. No, we can't. Okay, hold on. Just bear with me here, folks. Did we get Titan construction? Build? No. So battleship's the best we can build right now. So here we go. we're gonna we're gonna choose a battleship. And ultimately the way this was explained to me is you load up this battleship or this Titan Doomstar with the most expensive stuff you can make. The highest cost stuff, such as battle pods at 400. And that's probably it. Maybe automated repair unit at 50. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to drive up this cost over here. We're at 10,097. Now let's look at our weapons specials. Give me a second here. Let's start with specials. Interceptors, which is a type of fighter ship, cost 30. Space, two cost. That's not good. Let's go to bombs. Bombs cost one. Missiles. Antimatter Torps come in at 15. Pulse on Missiles come in at 15 and less space. What we're trying to do, though, is just get this cost as high as possible. And for our beam weapons, yeah, they're all sitting there. So what I would say is that you would take something like Pulse on Missile. You would make it as expensive as possible. Two shot. Oh, it reduces the cost quite a bit, actually. Interesting. Uh, that's fine. Let's hit. Ex Hold on. Give me, give, give me a second. No, no, no. Wait, wait, wait. Which is more efficient? I'm trying to get the cost higher than the space. Yeah, I can't really do that. It's fine. We'll try this. Now, we want to load as many of these on here as possible. And again, we're just driving up the cost over there on the side. God, that's a lot of pulse on. You put a lot of pulse on. Okay, so 1364, we'll call that good. We'll hit build. I have been told that if you keep something like this at the bottom of your queue stack, that anytime you finish an item, a lot of times there's a little bit of extra production. Say you finish the Marine Barracks, it costs uh, 60. And you're, you start, you're building at 0 to 12, 12 to 24, 24 to 36. You're adding 12 production each turn, right? You get up to, oh, that's a bad example. We'll go by 13s. <laughs> 13, 26, 39, 50, whatever, 2. On your last 13 production you add to hit 60, you're going to go over by 5 production. And that 5 production will disappear if there's not something in the queue after it. Now, in the case of the Marine Barracks, that fire production would go into the Moray 1, which is this big expensive boondoggle that we don't really need or want. But as long as the Moray is always living at the bottom of the stack, we will always push extra production into it. And it's kind of acting as like a surplus piggy bank. Another way to look at it in the RP sense, because I don't I don't really like meta gimmicks myself, where you're you're doing some part of the game, like you're cheating some alien species in a way that real aliens wouldn't behave because there's a glitch in how it was programmed or you know whatever. Um, I like to I like to try and simulate conquering the galaxy and interacting with space aliens as real as possible when I play, and that's part of the reason why I like to do RP play. However, I think it's believable that you could have surplus production uh, overruns. As you're building a marine barracks, you finish with five extra production. That could be leftover materials. That could be additional uh, training that your, your, your techs have, uh, new skills. So I think there's a way to, in the, in the RP, 
say that there is overload. There is surplus that ble that bleeds over as you finish up uh, production of something. The tools, the investments, uh, the, the people you've hired on. Beyond which, I think, think having something like a floating ship, like this battleship, this boondoggle that's always out there at the end of the queue but never quite done, that you're not having to pay for with your command points, I think in the RP sense, you could look at that as a mothball fleet. Now, I don't know if everyone uh, is from the US that watches the channel, and I don't know that everyone that watches the channel lives on a coastal state or country, but I live in the Bay Area of California, and for generations, the United States Navy has mothballed many of its old ships from World War II, then Korea, then Vietnam. These would be transport ships, not necessarily like destroyers and cruisers, but these ships that they would use to move men and material, stuff like that, and, and maybe some old, you know, destroyers and, and whatnot. <clears throat> Support ships, supply ships. They'll mothball in the Bay of San Francisco. Not like right by San Francisco, but like, you know, the bay is massive. So they'll go up into one of the little tributary branches kind of tucked away, you know, where it's not in front of someone's neighborhood. And um, I remember, especially as a kid, so like well, you know, 30 years ago, you would see dozens of these gray naval ships, you know, military, non-commercial, just anchored one next to another. And that's called the mothball fleet. The idea is, is that it's minimal maintenance to have them anchored there to keep them painted, keep them, uh, you know, afloat. But, you know, you don't have much in the way of fuel. You're not starting up the engines. You maybe even have part, you maybe have even removed engines and control units. They're just floating hulls for the time being. And over time, I think as they get so many decades old, the Navy goes in and does cut them up, sink them, repurpose them, sell them as they need to. They've all, you know, it, it, I think the Mothball fleet has dwindled considerably from when I was a kid. Because a lot of those ships were maybe 40 years old after World War II and it could still stay afloat. But now that it's been 70 years, 80 years, they can't be. So that, that fleet shrunk. But I would say having these, these military ships that are in the queue almost ready to be brought back into service is the RP way to look at it, this tactic of of building up resource and having that ship always ready to almost come online is by looking at it as a mothball fleet. Yeah, so we'll try it. Um, hopefully it's not, I've never done it before, so I don't know if it's gonna be more burden than it's worth, but is, we'll let, uh, uh, um, I don't know if I wanna make you guys watch me do this, but here, let's go in and change. Let's pop off the auto lab and let's put in the moray. Yeah, let's just, just, we'll just go through, we'll do it right now. Just bear with me. If I'm going to do this, I want to give it an honest try. Add in the more. Where are we at? Sagita. I know this is boring, but they can't build one. That's fine. They don't, because they don't have a star base. The Sagita probably also does not have a star base. Oh, no, they don't. They don't. They can't do it. Uh, here we go. Soul can do it, obviously. Change. Uh, no, they can't. I can't. Yeah. It, it is what it is, folks. It is what it is. That's fine. Return. No, this is one thing I don't exactly get about this mechanic, is that when you load up your queue, most of the time you've got a slew of buildings in here in the queue. Except in a planet like this where they've got everything done, a weather controller might come along pretty soon. I guess maybe when you get down to where you've built everything you want, you don't have stuff in the queue anymore, you would build something like this boondoggle more. I should call it the boondoggle, but. <laughs> and then you would load in your spies, your freighter fleets, your colony ships, your, wet, your, your real naval ships in there so that your surplus is always bouncing into that more. I guess. Because right now, if the spy finishes with the surplus, it will bounce into the more, but it would just bounce into the next item in the queue anyway. Let's jump to Boolean here. Let's see what they've got. So I, I guess that would be an example. The Salesman 1.5 finishes, you lose the surplus. So we'll throw the more in there. There you go. Uh, hit return. Boulon. 
Did we, did we just do Bulan? Yeah, we did. Kim. All right. Uh, anything else? Are any of the rest of these big enough? Maybe Bulan 3. Change. The Moray there will be after the Marine Barracks. Return. And maybe Soul 2. Change. No. Okay. We're going to call that good for now. This is my example, though. In Soul 2, the vast majority of the time, when the missile base finishes, its surplus will just fall into the ground battery. When the ba ground battery finishes, its surplus will fall into the automated factory. So I've already got, like... 30 turns worth of catching to do. So I feel like this, what you're getting by having the boondoggle on a world that has built everything and is now doing one spy, then another spy, then a freighter fleet, then a, I get where you may over time be losing quite a bit. But in general, I think in the early parts of the game where you're loading your queue up over and over, the surplus losses are going to be pretty nominal. So depending on how much time it takes to do this method, I leave to each of you to decide whether gaining that 3% extra production preservation uh, retention over the run is worth it to you for the human time you're putting in to maintain it. Because bear in mind, if I have the moray sitting here, it gets to the top of the queue, I add on, I then have to click it and scoot it down to the bottom. It's minimal, but it is just extra clicks. Question mark. Question. I'm not convinced, but we'll we'll try it out because it's a great suggestion. And I understand that it does 100% work. There's not a question of whether it works. It's just a question of whether it's worth your play to do as, as, as the player. So, turn. <clears throat> Ooh, nice. Anti-missile rockets. I don't ever use these, but can only target missiles. They have a maximum range of 15 squares and will fire defensively against approaching missiles if not yet fired in that turn. The chance to score hit is 85% minus 5% per distance. So it'll work all the way down until you just have a tiny chance to hit anything with it. I don't know if they're more effective than PD beam weapons. If anyone knows, I'd, I'd be curious. Um, all right, we finished another auto lab stock exchange. Spaceport, spaceport. So it's really driving our BC up massively, which which I appreciate. Um, I want to go in and see, because we are a massive BC production species, though, I want to make sure that we are continuing, continually pushing our purchases out. We want to be using the BC, especially with smaller, weaker little worlds did netch does netch have anyone to help them out no they're still solo but that the person should arrive there pretty soon let's go back to production the nice thing about sorting by production by the way when you have new little colonies is they're going to be working on your smaller things like artifacts research labs uh spaceports marine barracks the cheaper things are the lowest cost so they'll show up down here I am usually of the habit of always trying to buy anything that produces production sooner. So here we go. We'll purchase that four turns earlier. And that just means Netch will get on to building other things faster. Uh, let's check our leaders tab real quick. We haven't looked at that in a little while. All of our leaders are at least assigned to a system, which is good. Ships officers. We are down to just two cruisers. Oh, no, no. Here we go. There we go. Salesman five. And we're going to put Rear Admiral Dantos in there. Yes. He'll be there now. Awesome. That must be around our main star system. Turn. Another spy, Spaceport, Robominer, and a Settler arrived at Netch. Let's make sure that Settler is in production at Netch. Yes. That's perfect. They're working on colony bases because there's other planets available in the Netch system. Let's jump into our races tab because we haven't looked at this in a little while. We're rocking, let's pop this guy off. We got eight spies working on humans, eight spies working on Cylons right now. We'll keep them going for a while. And this is giving our, our uh, I don't want to say allies, but our soon to be clients that we have these trade agreements with. We're, we're like working our corporate, you know, fingers in on these three species. We're giving them a little break from the spine because they really don't like it. I don't know for certain, but I assume the bad rep you get from getting caught spying slowly decreases over time, or decreases over time. So I'm hoping we're cooling them down right now so that we can spy on them again shortly. Let return, let turn. Here we go. 
hail, mighty Emperor of the Deep Mind LLC people. Emperor Uzor has asked me to bring back the key to cybersecurity link. I offer you an example of Bularathi technology in return. Fusion beam. No. Uh, we've, we're past the fusion beam, in my opinion, with our weaponry. And I don't want them to gain extra security to resist our spies. No. We, we want to keep the... The, the leg up, uh, step ahead on spy technology. Research lab finished. And I'll tell you, I actually want to group up our fleet here. Well, this is the next question is who do we target next? I don't see any alien creatures out there in the galaxy right now. Can we send this guy out exploring, exploring? Nah. Ooh. Oh, he can reach that. Yeah, let's send this guy. Actually, that, that's too far for him to go. Let's send one of these guys. The salesman B, yeah. And then can this guy reach this? Or this? No. It's interesting. There's only like two star systems left. But um, I only am wondering because if there's an alien creature there, I'd be willing to kill it. But no, these are ultra poor, low G, tiny worlds. Garbage. This is a garbage world. That's why no one else has colonized it yet. Um... Yeah, we'll, we'll bring him back to the soul system and hit turn. Astro University completed using the most advanced teaching methods available. The efficiency of farmers, workers, and scientists is increased. Each receives a plus one bonus. So this is just a really nice building for your whole, your whole colony. All right, we've got plenty left to work through. At this point, I think the robotic factory is the next most logical piece for the our RP build. Although I'll tell you what, I really would like those phasers. Phasers are a really good beam weapon. Um, and we'll actually probably pick that up next just so we can be upgrading our salesmen with them. Once you get to that phaser level, you can start really punching through shields and, and that's where beam weapons really start to progress relative to, to the initial missile rush, which is what we, us and pretty much everyone else does in the early game. Finish the missile base, finish an auto lab. The Bulrathian human empires are now at war. Humans are going to go down. They can't resist the Bulrathi. Hold on, hold on. Let's go to the histograph. Here's the humans at the bottom of the composite. Bulrathi are red. So, a couple things we want to do here. We want to... Potentially, I'm going to pull out all but one spy. Um, I, I'm doing this as, as, as a test. If a species is eliminated, do you lose the spies you had there spying on them? Or do they pop back into here? I don't know. I, I'm just curious what will happen to this guy. I don't know if this is a really good way for me to tell when it happens. But the other thing we can do is take an audience with Durash. And we can't exchange tech. Dang it. Surrender, proposed treaty, peace treaty. Yes. Okay, here we go. We proposed a peace treaty. The year 3524 will be remembered as the end of the war between the humans and Deep Mind LLC. I did that because I wanted to try and exchange tech and get everything we could from them before they're eliminated, but I don't see that happening now. That sucks. That didn't really work the way I wanted it to. And Jersey High Council has convened to elect one leader to be Emperor of the Galaxy. This ain't how we want to do it, folks. We want to mind control them. Uh, we're the Deep Mind LLC. Emperor Chut of the Deep Mind LLCs and Emperor Uzur of the Borathis have been nominated. I'm going to skip through this. It's everybody doing their votes. Quite a few abstain, uh, abstentions, I guess. Is that what it is? Abstentions? we got to be a little bit careful here. If we put our nine votes with the eight votes we've already received, that will put us to 17. 17 is over twice as much as seven. And we will become the leader ruler of the galaxy. If we don't accept the ruling, they'll all unite against us, which is awesome. But we're not exactly in that place to do that for two reasons. 
we don't have a substantial fleet built. I mean, we could get one built, but we're not there yet. The other reason is our we're, we're benefiting greatly from our treaties. And I believe everyone will simply declare war on us. They become one unified species, all of them together. And I think they're at war. I don't want to take that risk. So I'm going to abstain. Neither side has to uh, the majority. And we'll continue on. Yeah, we, we don't want to win peacefully. We want to win by capitalism. Monopoly of all minds and money in the galaxy. That's what we want. That's all we will be satisfied with. A couple things going on here. Um, I want to make sure that we have our weather controllers in the queue. We bump that up right behind the salesman there. And our other world with natives is right here. Same thing. Um, we're going to put that weather controller in. I don't need every one of my planets to have a weather controller, but I think it would be really suitable there. And then, yeah, let's see. Can we help some folks out? Can we get some stuff built? Robo Miner. Yeah. We've got so much surplus at this point. I'm not sweating it. Starbase, Colony Base. Mm. Auto Lab. I don't think Auto Lab's an important thing to spend money on. Maybe the Colony Base. Yeah, let's get that Colony going there. Turn. Turn. And yeah, here we go. Ultra rich, heavy G, that sucks, but we'll get that gravity generator done. You see here, the worker penalty is in fact at a minus 50%. That's a big oof. Even though it's ultra rich, they will be producing just half of the nine they could produce. So, and there's a plus 25 cost all maintenance. Same reasons. Uh, or actually probably because it's like a, it's like a lava world. Radiated. That's radiated. Yeah, there you go. Super hot. So let's help them out here. We're going to get the automated factory with the robo miner. With the gravity generator. Yes. Mm, anything else good? So much. This is so much good. Research, spaceport, store base. And I can't do the more yet. But yeah, we're going to buy that outright for them right there. We'll help speed them along with that. And then... We finished Robo Miner Plant, Salesman 1.5, Missile Base, another Salesman 1.5, and the Colony Base on Netch 2. So let's jump in here. These guys need a Marine Barracks. I gotta not be neglecting that. So let's get them a Marine Barracks. will be cheap. Then the Gravity Generator. Then let's get the Star Base. Then the Spaceport. I want to get that Star Base so that we can get that Moray Boondoggle into the queue. We'll hit return and let's start pulling our ships together here i want to make sure our fleet can at least reasonably defend itself nothing there that little world next turn another salesman another salesman we've got plenty of overhead by the way we're at 17 of 32 command points so we can build many many of these cruisers hollow simulator autofac and let's group these guys up yeah, our fleet's going to start running away with it here really quick. Marine barracks finish. Marine barracks finish. That's getting rid of the, that negative 20 penalty on those worlds, which I like. And actually, here, let's pull this human off of Netch 2, and we'll just shuffle them over to Netch 1. And, uh, yeah, it just helps them build faster. So uh, we'll finish this Robo Miner plant. I'm being a little willy-nilly with the BC, because at this point, I don't really see this as a tight game it's not a tight game um with the cruisers we have we could probably smash into any of the other alien species at this point robotics factory builds mechanical workers that add production depending on a colony's mineral resources 5 8 10 15 or 20 that's going to be for what is it uh, ultra poor poor normal rich ultra rich i don't remember the names of them all but you guys get it that's just a flat rate does not require any actual workers assigned. It just does that automatically. But you're getting a lot more bang for the buck on your rich and ultra rich worlds to build that that unit. So at this point, I want phaser. It's going to be well worth it. We'll have it six turns. We finished an auto lab. We finished a robo miner plant. And uh, yeah, let's jump over here. Look at our colonies. Pull this guy off. 
weather controllers coming online. Okay, here we go. We don't, so we gotta be a little bit careful. You can see because these mores, these are the boondoggles, are so expensive, they're gonna be working on these for a long time. That's the point though, is that it's a safety catch. So what else would we want here? We would want a robotic factory, sure. We would want an Astro University, sure. Um, ground battery, missile base. Yeah, we'll start loading these up. Soil enrichment, weather controller. And then we gotta switch the more to the bottom there. There you go, we'll hit okay. Uh, let's go to the next moray, and we'll do the same thing. Ground base, Astro University, radiation shield, soil enrichment, uh, weather controller, and we'll switch the moray to the bottom. And one more to do. I know this is super exciting, but this is part of the maintenance of running everything. Well, we don't have any space academies. I don't mess with those too much, but maybe we should get them. Um, fighter garrison, sure. I'll switch the moray to the bottom. See, at this point of the game, I don't really think we need more freighter fleets because we have such effective farming going on. We don't really need more spies, although we do need to start spying on some of the other species here pretty shortly. But yeah, this is looking really good here, folks. Let's hit uh, return. I'm wondering if we should... Well, we can't smash Orion. I was thinking we can make a run on Orion, but we don't have the power for that yet. But maybe we should start spying on some of our friends again. <laughs> Who? Who do we want to go after? Let's go after the Bullrathi. And we'll see how it works there. We'll see if we get them to declare war on us or whatever. But um, I think it might be time to go take over Mentar and eliminate the humans and the Cylons. We've given them quite a few turns. Oh, here, we're still spying. Oh, that's from the Borathi this time. Cloning Center allows doctors to replace failing or damaged organs, increasing the population growth rate by 100k on each turn as long as the current population is below the planetary maximum. That's massive. Might want to build some of those up. Oh, here come the Borathi. Let me make this simple for you. Shut. Remove your spies from our territory, or we will cancel the current non-aggression pact. No problem. Message received. Finished robotic factory. Let's jump into our races tab. We're going to pull these spies out of here and we're going to just drop them in on the Alkari and we'll just keep rotating it through. Now, bear in mind, we are at seven spies. If when we conquer the humans, this guy pops to here, we'll be at eight. So that's what we want to remember to check for. And yeah, our fleet is inbound. Actually, here, can we Take them to Netch. Here, watch this. We'll jump to Netch and then we'll wormhole through. Here we go. Uh, er Idiom fuel cell technology was stolen from the Alkari by our spy. Supplies sufficient energy to propel a ship 12 parsecs before refueling. This hopefully is better than the one we're at. I can't remember where we're at on fuel cells. The Alkari Empire declares the trade treaty between us broken. Your repeated thievery has left us no other options. So that cooldown period, I don't know if that works. I don't know if you can cool it down or if eventually you'll hit a max of ceiling and they just won't tolerate it anymore. Question mark. Can we renegotiate the treaty given enough time? Question mark. So we finished another hollow simulator, an auto lab, a star base and a biosphere. That's perfect. That gives us more command points here. Let's do a couple things real quick. Let's send our fleet through the wormhole from Netch to Rius. That'll just shorten the overall time of this. Let's go to our races tab. And we're going to move these spies now up to Bortis. So they eliminated all treaties. You can see here their status with us is neutral. Let's just try and grant an audience. No, he refuses to talk to us. He's pissed at us. That's fine. It's understandable. We are not particularly trustworthy. We're going to mind control the entire galaxy. It's We're like the Borg that way. We're like corporate board. Robofactory finished, and there we go. We wormholed through, and now we're gonna head in towards Mentar. Oh gosh, dang it! Are they gonna human fleet? Oh god, this that, this could actually be tough. Oh shit! Oh shit! We're gonna try and crack them independently. We don't have to fight them all at the same time. Hold on. We're gonna return to Rius. We're gonna send in our other ships. We're gonna send our entire fleet 
but when we attack the human world, we'll fight one side. When we attack the Cylon world, we'll, we'll hit their side. I don't think they can defend together. So we can split those fleets in half. Fusion Beam. We finally got the Fusion Beam from... Uh, we didn't have to trade for it. We just stole it. Projects a Tetrium stream of charged particles inflicting 2-6 to six points of damage with some mods. We stole this from the Nolam, obviously. <laughs> You have pushed us too far, Emperor. You could have asked for technology. Instead, you stole it. Now, our trade treaty is forever broken. Forever? Question? I don't know. Ground batteries finished. Astro University finished. Spy. Weather controller. And another salesman. So let's reload this stuff. Let's get the... We'll see. Does it stack this way? I'm trying to remember. Hold on. Let me see. Freighter fleet. Spy. No, it stacks to the end. Okay, perfect. Boom. Pop these off. So let's start loading this in. Robofac, Autolab, Astro University, Marine Barracks, Ooh, Missile Base, Stock Exchange, Moray, the Boondoggle at the end there. Perfect. And our fleet's almost together. Let's check, look at our races tab. Yeah, no treaties. You know what, though? You know what that means? Is that we can just start indiscriminately spying on these guys. If they want to declare war on us, they can do that. But that's it. It sucks we're losing all that research. It sucks we're losing all that BC. But at this point in the game, we're just kind of going for the the kill here, realistically. The great D-Mind LLC and Nolan have come together for yet another important moment in history. We are interested in entering a research tree with the... <laughs> What do you say? Yeah, sure. Thanks, bro. Except. So they just came to us after breaking it. I, I don't even know what to say. Autolab. Gravity generator done. Nolan and Arcari empires are now at war. Oh, that's actually good for us. Here we are. We will add the moray in at the end. But yeah, let's get that robot factory. Astro University. Marine barracks. Ground battery. Cell enrichment. Weather controller. And the moray. So I see once you kind of get rolling on that, it's not so hard to get that Moray pushed in there. We do want to check occasionally, though, over here on the colonies to make sure at the very top. So there, that Moray came in. We want to now load stuff in front of it. So Robot Factory, Astro University, Ground Battery, Cloning Center, Marine Barracks, Base Academy. Sure. Okay. And then we switch the Moray to the bottom. Yeah. I guess it's yeah. It's working. It doesn't seem to be that much maintenance. Um, um, I've had a, a couple of people give me that tip now over the last couple months we've been doing this. And they're like, dude, you need to do this. Yeah. It doesn't seem to be that much overhead, honestly. Um, I never doubted it would work. <laughs> so it was just like... Um, we got a couple more salesmen coming due very shortly. But I want to go for it. I, I want to fight. Let's just send in our fleet. Let's crack the humans and the Cylons and let's do it. The Cylon fleet is left to go attack the Borathi and the human fleet is left. What are they thinking? Oh my God. They've left their worlds unprotected. This is game over, dude. This is hilarious. There's two transport fleets. Starbase and missile base firing. Okay. That's no joke. Let's crack the um, Cylons first. We're not spying on either of them any, any, anymore anyway. So let's... Um, should we go auto? Do you guys want to go auto fight on this? Is that fun? Let me know if you guys prefer seeing me handle the fights personally or if we want to go auto. We got to be a little careful not to scour all life from the surface of the planet because we have so many nukes. <laughs> We got a lot of nukes. But they've got the fighter garrison down there in a missile base, I think. Hold on. Yeah. It can survive a lot of damage. Let's just hit auto. So what you guys are going to see is just massive swarms of nukes slamming into the planet, slamming into the star base. And hopefully we don't eradicate all life irradiating the planet forever. Um, here, let's can we switch our view over so we can see our fleet. Not really. There we go. You see here the missile waves leaving the ships as our ships advance. 
Our ships move faster than the missiles. Uh, we'll jump back to auto. Doing minimal damage with those beam weapons. They're, e they're able to hit. That's a railgun shooting there. Those little BBs. And here we go. We're starting on the star base. Starting to chew into it. We have interceptors coming out. They will do some serious damage. No doubt. Here we go. Chewing into that star base. I would love to see some PD lay into these interceptors here. Hopefully. But we'll, we'll see. Those were our passive defense. Oh, God. Look at those. Did you guys see those numbers? We just dealt uh, over a 1,000 star base. And this salvo is going to tear into the planet here pretty heavy. Each structure, though, I think has a base of 400? Is that modified by armor? I don't know. It may just be a flat 400. I, I honestly don't recall. Hey, our ship's way tougher. Did, oh, God. Okay. <laughs> so, I don't know that we lost a cruiser. Their, their interceptors and those missiles hit our ship and did a lot of damage, but I didn't see it destroyed. So, our ship clearly is considerably tougher. With the armor, uh, rein, uh, we have heavy armor, reinforced hull, as well as the grade of armor we have. are keeping our cruisers very durable, which is awesome. Now, you can see here, we might have done some damage to the planet, but in general, it's it's in pretty good shape. Eight buildings, 15 colonists. That's awesome. Now, normally, we would have to crack these eight infantry and four tanks, and, and that would be a whole battle. We could bombard. We could invade with a bunch of Marines. Now, it's mind control. It's ours now. You're tuned to GNN, your source for all the news you need to know. The Cylon flag waves no more. <laughs> that, that was a robot sniff. No colonies or fleets remain of the Cylon Empire. There may be fleets left, but... And here we go. Our scientists have completed the research on the multi-phased physics. Phaser. Fires a transwarp beam. Phased energy that actually exists in several dimensions simultaneously. Ooh, I exist in at least four that I can think of simultaneously. Doesn't mean I can shoot through shields or anything. Inflicting 5 to 12 points of... 5 to 20 points of damage. Modifications... It actually has a lot of really good mods on there. The shield piercing is a fun one. And they make great point defense weapons with the auto fire. It's, it's one of the better point defense uh, beams you can come up with in the game. So we're down here now. Well, we're, we're here. Antimatter fusion. We're one of these. Warp interdictor. Yeah, I'll grab the warp interdictor. That will allow us a uh, system wide thing. It helps. Slow down enemy fleets coming at your, your systems. Eh, whatever. I think you only need one per system. Scouts arrive in the Mentar system. There we go. Boom. Boom. These are all these beautiful Cylons. Juicy, juicy Cylon mines. They're completely converted to our cause. There's, there's nothing else we need to do. Let's see. How, how many food do I get per Cylon? Gee, Cylons are really shitty at farming. <laughs> Hold on, oh, I want to see something here. Two food is all he can produce? Nah. They, they shouldn't be farming. Cylons are not good farmers. But let's get uh, let's get some stuff done. Robo Miner, Robot Factory, Marine Barracks, Astro University. Starbase wouldn't be a bad idea. Research Lab. And we can't get a Moray in there, unfortunately. Um... The simulator, sure. Uh, okay. Your turn. We are short on freighters. What are we gonna do here, folks? Oh, this is so sad. What's going on up in the corner there? You guys see the fleet coming back? <laughs> they won't make it. Oh, this is so good. It's perfect. It's sad. It's sad for them. It's not sad for us. This is excellent for us. Did we lose ships? I only say because our command points are way down. Did we lose ships and I just didn't see them destroyed? No, we had seven. Huh. All right, well, I i mean, I don't think we took heavy losses of anything, so that's good. There's a couple of things I wanted to work on though. Races. The humans are still here with their single spy and we are sitting at eight spies. So will this jump to nine or will this guy die when we defeat the humans? Question, I don't know. Let's hit return. 
what was I thinking of? We need freighter fleet because we, we, we these Cylons are crappy farmers. So that's fine. Let's uh, grab someone away here. Let's what's almost done. Uh, ground battery. Here we go. I'm gonna slot in a freighter fleet. Put it right ahead of the ground battery. And let's get even one more freighter fleet here. And we'll slot that ahead of the ground battery. I want this freighter fleet done like pronto. And that'll help alleviate starvation at Mentar, I guess. Here, I'll, I'll pluck two of these guys off for right now. There we go. I just don't want to have anyone starve if I can help it. Uh, here we go. Return. And yeah, we're going to finish off the humans before they're they're not a considerable fleet gets to us. I mean, it's not great, but I don't want to fight that battleship, so we we won't. <laughs> we won't. Um, oh wait, here we go. Mentar. And goodbye, humans. Oh wait, it won't let us attack. Here we go. Select combat. Boom. One turn before their fleet returns. You have the following treaties. Peace treaty. You really risk to wish to risk war. Yeah, wait, wait, wait. What, what's, what's happening? Oh, God dang it. What just happened? As ambassador of the great Alkari nation, I greet you on behalf of the majestic Emperor Saguaro Tai. Your empire is pathetic, Chud. I suggest you offer Grand Emperor Saguaro Tai a gift to continue being in favor. 5% tribute treaty? <laughs> Reject? Um, you will pay for this decision. Foolish deep mind LLC dog. Is that a bit of bluster? I don't think they're any match for us. But hold on. A spy against Bordas was mysteriously assassinated. A spy sent against Bordas was mysteriously assassinated. They got two of our spies. Next in queue is ground battery or freighter fleet, freighter fleet. What just happened? Did we just advance turn? I I I We have a peace treaty with them. We do have a peace treaty. That sucks. We're going to break it. We're going to break it because I, I don't want to fight their fleet. Yeah, we're going to break it. it. They're gone anyway. It doesn't, it doesn't matter anymore. So we are going to attack. No, oh, dang it. I didn't know I had advanced the turn. I didn't know I had advanced. I don't. I did, did I reach down here and click turn? Shit, I must have. That was weird. Crap. Yeah, fuck it. Well, <laughs> I, I yeah, I, I I'm confused as to what happened there. I said no to this, and I must have hit this. I guess. I don't know. Uh, yeah. Let's just auto here. Let's see what happens. This might actually be a pretty decent fight because they've got a battleship in there with them. Now they don't have a fighter base. They've only got a missile base, so there's a lot less to destroy on the surface of this planet. But we'll see what kind of a uh, punch that uh, battleship hits with. I know the starbase can take a good amount of damage. That's, that's not even a question. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. Jeez, do they... They do have... Sh do they have shields? They don't have shields. So that's one thing that the humans never picked up was any shielding technology. Not that it's critical. Like a level one shield wouldn't help them that much. But yeah, we're just punching straight into their ships here. And although they're damaging us, it's it's not nearly enough. Ugh. They didn't have a chance. We're doing a we're doing a mercy by a by what, what's the term? We're we're bringing them in at the bottom of the pyramid scheme. Yeah, they're co they're coming in at tin level, but they'll be able to work their way up to emerald if they stick around long enough. Yeah, <laughs> multi-tier marketing—it's it's amazing. It's a gift humanity has to offer the galaxy. Now, here's an unfortunate thing: that human settlement—I don't know how they got it. Maybe in a war with the Cylon, so it had almost nothing to start with. We're just going to mind control them, and there you go. You're tuned to GNA, your source for all the news you need to know. The human flag waves no more. No colonies or fleets remain of the human empire. Yeah. Stock exchange done. New ship salesman 1.5. Ashley University. Boom. Uh, well, 
that supposed to be a human? Oh no, the humans must have conquered a Cylon. The last human... The last pop in the human empire was a Cylon, not a human. FYI. I don't think I've, I've seen that before. I'm sure it's happened in games. I just never noticed it before. But that's an interesting one. Yeah, let's get them going. Uh, yeah, we'll just build through these. We'll get them a marine barracks. Let's get them a cloning center. They got a ways to go. Boom. And let's get that store base done. Okay. And yeah, we'll just bind that artifact right off the bat. Hit return. Uh, salesman finished up here. We'll get the moray added at the end. But yeah, here we go. Astro University, cloning center, ground battery. I'm just clicking through these in a hurry. Oh no, wait. I want to click that off of there. And let's put the Mori in. Boom. Done. Return. We got a lot of ships. We just finished this guy. We'll group him up at A branch. So let's just take a look at the races tab real quick. We are down to three left. Should we spy on everyone? Do we need this from Uzor here? We are getting 46 BC for that. Yeah, we do want it. If we didn't have that 46 BC, the reason our BC was so high was because of all of our trade treaties, obviously. We won't spy on Uzor right now. I don't think we're that desperate for their technology. I think we have a very good lead on technology as it is. So where are we at? We're about wrapped up with the session today. I think the questions are, do we pluck off the next alien species? Do we go for Orion? Do we try and crack Orion? Could we do it with a bunch of missile ships? I don't know. It could be a big hit. Tell you what, let's make sure that our leaders are on ships. I, again, I don't think we lost anything. No, it doesn't look like we did. But let's get these leaders onto our best ship, which in this case is the 1.5s. Here's another salesman. So we're just getting them on the most durable ships we have. Boom, that's done. Check our races tab one more time. I think our spies are in good shape, although Bordas is freaking massacring our spies. We may want to get a couple more spies generated here. Although I think we have an edge on it. We are playing a little loose with the number of total spies we have. So yeah, let's jump up to ground batteries here. Let's squeeze a spy in. We'll throw that in after the ground battery and let's pop that radiation shield off and we'll, we'll get a second spy. So we'll have a couple more spies pretty shortly. And let's do that at uh, one more planet right here. Boom. Especially with Bordis killing our spies off. Yeah, he's going to chew through them pretty quickly. Let's sort, but well, we are sorted by production. Okay, artifact just got done. I'm going to be a little cautious with how we're spending BC right now because we are losing our treaties. It's a pleasure to meet with you once again. We feel no ill will towards the Deep Mind LSC Empire. Let us agree on a non-aggression pact so we may both concentrate on our true enemies. So, yeah, sure. <laughs> here, let's actually jump back in here. Let's do an audience with Bortis more pressing matters. Interesting. So he's willing to get the research treaty from us, but he will not talk with us. Let's see if Sugoro Kutai has time. He does. Proposed treaty. Trade treaty? Such an offer is not welcome at this time. Wow. They are really pissed at us. Like, yeah, they're really pissed at us. Okay. <laughs> oh, here we go. Rear Admiral Delon, the legendary captain. Fighter pilot, helmsman, ordnance, weaponry, famous... Oh my gosh, he costs 9 BC a turn? Even with us being Charismatics, which reduces costs? That's insane. But we will hire him. Yeah, we let's let's do it. He's, he's I think he's looks like a great leader. Ground batteries, robotic factory, spaceport. Deep mine and Akari have a non-aggression pack. Nolm and Akari are now at peace. Interesting. The Alkari are pretty squeezed down here. The Nolan look like they're spreading out very, very successfully. But yeah, let's jump into our leaders tab. Um, 
Let me find a salesman that hopefully doesn't have anyone on it. And we sign him. There we go. So is he really that good? Yeah, if you look at the Rear Admiral DeLon here, at these plus 30s, no one else can touch that. I mean, Rear Admiral Dantos is there, but even his Helmsman's not as high, and his Mega Wealth is replacing Ordnance. So this guy's legit. This is the real deal. Now, I can see us potentially getting rid of Gizmo at this point. I think Gizmo's the weakest link that plus 15 to research, we've moved so far beyond that, and we don't need a little bit of engineering. I, I want some beefy badasses like this. So actually, let's dismiss. We've never done this before. We're going to dismiss Gizmo. We appreciate his service legitimately. He's done a good job for us, but I want to free up our limited leadership pool to get someone else. Let's look at that similar way here with our colony leaders. I like the spiritual leader. Morale's huge. Nothing wrong with that. Famous doesn't hurt. Uh, Magistrate Villan here has finance, he has mega wealth, and he has that trader bonus. It's not bad, it's not great. Bulan here is our farming leader, environmentalist and farming. This is tricky. We're getting to a technology level where we can mitigate most of the pollution. We're also at a technology level where we can produce food easily. It's become really a not even a secondary, it's a tertiary consideration for our species at this point. It's how much food we have. I think Magistrate Felina is the weakest link on this. But we'll jump down to Magistrate Tord real quick. He has farming, finance, and labor, plus commando. He's a keeper. But Felina, although she's done a great job for us up to this point, when we really wanted that extra food production, we don't need her anymore. A simple weather controller should more than make up for what she's providing, or approximately. So we will dismiss... Felina, thank you for your service. So we now have one ship's officer and one colony leader spot available for us to fill with new leaders. Our food did take a hit, losing her, it's no joke, but we were expecting that. So if we sort by food production, we will find that these two worlds are at the very top of that with their natives. Let me jump in here real quick. Is there anything we can do to help produce more food here? Well, not a hydroponic farm, uh, not that. <laughs> um, Astra University would help with that. And we're going to put that above the boondoggle. And actually, let's get a couple other things loaded in there. So we want that there, and we'll move the moray to the bottom. And then we'll, we'll be wrapping up this session here today. And our other world, Raw, is working on the salesman. The weather controller is there, and the Astro University is there. We'll put the Astro University after the weather controller and the salesman will be done shortly and we'll add the moray as the boondoggle at the end and actually i want that spy right there so is the weather controller and the astro universities come online on these two farming worlds it'll more than make up for the big uh we probably lost about 12 because we we dismissed felina but if, if she's not if that's not an empty spot, it won't give us new leaders to show up. We have to have empty slots to have access to new leaders. So that's why we're doing this this way. But um, it'll more than make up for it. So uh, i actually curious here. I'll pull these guys out of here. Pull him out of there. Can I do that? Give me a sec. I'm just going to kind of reorganize to... Two farmers, you can see what I did there. Um, and here, we'll pop, pop this guy off. We've kept all of our production at two producers per colony. That's just a way for us to mitigate pollution for the time being, so we're not losing a, a large amount. Pollution gets worse the, the larger your production is on your planet. Uh, it, 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 you lose more and more barrels. I mean, the percentage goes up. So you can see here, like, this world has no loss on production. Okay, so what we do need, though, is more farmers so let's jump a guy over to a branch there and let's jump a human over here god he's not a very good farmer this guy well that was better yeah let's pull the human off let's see what's this guy doing that guy's huge all right yeah let's do that and we're short of freighter fleet interesting let's Get a freighter fleet in the queue after the spy right here. Boom. And we'll get one more in after the spy. Uh, it, oh, 
it is there. Okay. Did I mess that up? Here we go. Right over. Well, I'll put him in front of that spy. Okay, so we're gonna build those freighter fleets. We've got some spies going. Everything's in a good spot. This is a good time to stop. If you watch, thank you so much. At this point, we're really running away with it. We're gonna, I think. Geez, the Alcari are actually surprisingly strong. <coughs> but I think they're getting hit on the population Nolan. But rather, you pull ahead in population. That's gotta help them. Buildings. The Nolans suck, but they got a lot of colonies. Such such a weird dynamics in this galaxy. The Alcari are going out though. The Bulrathi are pulling ahead of us on population. Or no, I sorry, on fleet. That's awesome. But that the, the Bulrathi are crushing into the Alcari there. The Alcari are who's gonna go down next, I think. They must have a lead on tech. That's what they have. But because the Alcari has a dunk on the fleet and they're down to very few systems they will be our next target on our next session yeah and then maybe we'll go after orion and then we'll wrap up everybody else if you watch thank you take care